Audiobook title, A Tale of Steel and Gunpowder, 62 and 63, by Pixie Tokaizaki 14. This work belongs to author, Pixie Tokaizaki 14. Source Scribble Hub and Royal Road com. Chapter 62, Breach and Clear Part 1. When the twins descended the stairs, if they found Derek, who was talking to his party, he was probably briefing them on their mission. When Eric noticed Nira and Deli approaching them, he turned towards them and said, Ellie, Nira, I was just reminding them of our mission. Nira nodded in approval as Eric turned his gaze toward Ellie. Thanks to the emergency, we haven't really introduced each other, he said. So my name is Eric. I'm a swordsman and the leader of this small party. He added, turning towards his party members. The big guy there is Gareth. He's our guard, he said as he pointed at him. Nice to meet you, little lady, he said with a deep yet oddly safe voice. The girl in the robes there is Hildia. Our mage, he said as he pointed at said mage. Hello, she said in a quiet voice. And the elf over there is Shale. Our resident archer, he said as he pointed at Shale, who wore a distressed expression. The complete opposite of her demeanor back at Redfield. What's wrong with her? Ellie asked. She idolized Lady Amiria. In fact, she was the reason why Shale wanted to become an adventurer in the first place, and an archer one at that, Gareth explained with a tinge of pity in his voice. I see, Ellie said slowly. I'll be fine. Let's just go save Lady Amiria Shale said as she clutched her bow her expression changing from distressed to determined. Well, nice to meet you all. My name is Ellie, Nira's twin sister, she said. She then picked up Mofu. The small fox grumbled in annoyance when he was removed from his spot on Nira's shoulder. And this is Mofu, Nira's spirit companion, she said and she noticed Mofu's secondary colors turned red as she quickly placed the small fox back on Nira's shoulder, after which they returned to their silver color. Mofu, a vulpin, interesting Gareth said as he scratched his chin. T this little guy is a vulpin? H he looks s so cute. Hildia's face brightened up as she saw Mofu on Nira's shoulder. Ahem, now that's all out of the way, we have to go. Every second we waste is a second where Lady Amiria is being kept somewhere, Gareth said. Agreed. Let's go everyone. Nero added as they exited the guild. When they left the guild, they started speed walking through the streets and roads with the goal of reaching the slums before nightfall, unbeknownst to them. However, they were being watched from the rooftops. Amiria's eyes slowly opened, only to find herself in a dimly lit cell. Cobblestone was beneath her. With only an iron door in front, the walls looked old and had many cracks, along with water dripping from the ceiling. Her arms and legs were chained to the wall, not allowing her to move an inch, and a thick metal collar was attached to her neck and was also chained to the wall. Her body was also filled with scratches from her futile resistance to getting captured. While she was busy thinking about how she got here, she heard the latches on the iron door in front of her unlock as the door opened and she saw the familiar sight of Nicholas. Nicholas, she said while she gritted her teeth. Nicholas stood there wearing his expensive-looking gold armor and carrying his esquiet sword on his hip. He wore the haughtiest smirk one can muster as he entered the room with his hands behind his back. How are you doing this fine day, slave? He said. Amiria tried to use her mana to conjure a spell. Wind spear, she yelled, but nothing came out. Did you really think we wouldn't make any provisions for your magical abilities? He chuckled as he stood in the center of the room. Why are you doing this? She asked slowly because she was a bit exhausted and the pain of the cuts on her body made her tense. Oh, it's nothing really. Just an adventurer doing their quest, he answered. You know very well that your guild card is getting terminated if the guild master hears about this, she said. Her teeth still gritted. If he knew he said as he stepped closer. You see, slave, these people offered me something that is more precious than what my father offered me. He stepped closer and kneeled down to meet her at eye level. And what is it? She asked before she winced in pain as the syringe Nicholas was carrying in his hand pierced her skin. Nicholas pulled the plunger back to fill the container with blood before he pulled it out. A whole region to myself, an offer that my father could never give me he said as he turned his back towards Amiria. I'll see you around, Lady Amiria he said in a mocking tone before closing the door behind his hat and reapplying the locks. 
After Nicholas left, Amiria was left with her own thoughts inside David Dim's cell much like the one that the Lord kept her in. She was on the verge of tears, thinking of the dying here, all alone. She then silently wept and her tears dripped down on the cold cobblestone below. I'm sorry, Dad, she said under her tears. She would never forget the words the old guildmaster told her all those years ago. His badly beaten and bleeding body flashed before her mind, and his final words have echoed through her head ever since that fateful night. Live on Amiria. My journey ends here, but yours is only the beginning. His words still bounced back and forth inside her head. Her tears slowly stopped flowing as she clung on to the hope that was placed in her heart thanks to the old guildmaster, and hope was coming. Her eleven ears suddenly picked up a bang, which made her look up. Her heart suddenly filled with hope as she heard the noise of flute steps going past the cell door in a panicked manner. There are no guards outside, they are expecting us, Nira said as she peeked from the corner of a building onto an old wooden house that looked worse for wear. It looked like it had been neglected for years and was on the verge of collapsing. What makes you say that, Eric said beside her, who was backed up against the wall. Did you not see the silhouettes of hooded figures on the rooftops earlier? Gareth said. No, I didn't, Eric replied as he looked at Gareth. There goes our element of surprise, Ellie said, almost cursing. Let's go, we need to get inside, Ellie said as they all walked to the front door. But when they tried to open it, it's locked, which is already a given, Ellie said as she let go of the handle. S. So how are we going to get inside? Hildia said a bit panicked. I don't see other entrances. Does anyone know how to lock big? Eric asked as he turned his head to look at everyone and see if someone would raise their hand. I may have a solution, Nira said as she pulled out her B-25 superposed. An interesting weapon, Gareth commented as he looked at the strange tube Nira was holding. Give me some space, Nira said as she loaded a buckshot shell into the breach while everyone else gave her the space she asked for. She then stood beside the door with her back against the wall. She then moved her hands so that her shotgun would be in line with the door lock. When she pulled the trigger, red smoke covered the breach as dozens of medium-sized pellets of lead shot forward with enough energy to blow a hole straight through the lock and door. It was then followed by a rather loud bang. Whoa. Eric said, dumbfounded. That is a very deadly weapon, Gareth commented with a tinge of sweat dropping from his forehead. I've never seen anything like it, Hildia said, breathing heavily as she was surprised by the sudden bang. That's enough reactions, Ellie said as she opened the door to the house. Agreed, let's search the house for any kind of secret entrances that would lead to their little underground area. Nira said as she kneeled down to let Mothu have a sniff. 15. Chapter 63, Breach and Clear Part 2 Next, soon they searched the building. They tried looking everywhere but found nothing that might lead to an underground area. There's nothing, Eric said in confusion. Did we perhaps enter the wrong building? Shale said as she turned a corner only to find an old wall that was barely standing with all the cracks in it. No. This is the building. The guildmaster gave us a detailed description of it. Gareth then lifted an old board of wood, only to find nothing underneath. And maybe, they casted some sort of invisibility spell with wind magic. Hildia then closed her eyes to feel the electromagnetic mana of the area to see if that were the case. Much to the whole team's dismay, she found nothing. There's no magic, she said silently when Nera entered the room. Sis, was there anything in the kitchen? or what's left of it? Ellie asked as she stood up from a crouching position. Nothing, just a collapsed floor from above and a wall that is beyond repair, she said with a sigh at the end. There's got to be something. A secret lever or button somewhere, or a magic conduit, Eric said in annoyance. Gareth turned his body towards him and said, we'll keep looking, turn this entire building upside down if we have to, as they were discussing their next move. The familiar small fox form of Matthew was rummaging around near the corner of the room, sniffing at a pile of debris. When he turned in a certain direction, he noticed that there was a scent that he had never smelled before. So he followed the train before reaching a small pile of rubble. Matthew. They heard the small fox yell from near the corner. He was frantically jumping around while pointing at the small pile of rubble he had found a weird scent coming off of. I think Matthew found something. 
Ellie said as she walked up to the pile of rubble and slowly cleared it. Give some help here, she asked as Gareth and Nira walked up to her and assisted. Once they took off the rubble that was once piled near the corner, they were left with a clear floorboard. Mofu. Mofu Mofu. They heard the small fox again pointing downwards. Nira scanned the area where they had cleared the rubble and found a latch. When she lifted it up, there was a singular lever that was jutting out from the dirt that was under the floorboard. When she pulled the lever, the whole place started to shake and was at risk of collapsing altogether. When the shaking stopped, they noticed that the middle of the room sank, and the floorboards that once were on the floor now serve as steps that transition to cold stone that leads down into the depths of the underground. Looks like we found it, Nira said in satisfaction. Yeah, weapons out, everyone. Shale said as she pulled out her bow. Ellie unsheathed her sword along with Eric. The former revealed her bandolier, which held multiple throwing knives and was ready to use. Gareth pulled out his heavy shield while Hildia cast a fire spell onto her staff, which made the tip start burning so they could see in the dark. Nira opened the breech of her shotgun, which made the spent shell from earlier reject into her hand and be replaced with two birdshot shells. I like to keep this for close encounters, Nira said after loading the shells and closing the breach. That weapon gets even more interesting when I see you operate it, Nira heard Shale say behind her. That's my sister, always full of surprises, even if she hides things from me. Ellie said the last part with a tinge of venom in it. Nira ignored what she had said and started to follow Eric, who was in front of her. Gareth leads the way, followed by Ellie, Eric, Nira, Hildia and finally Shale at the back. Follow the line, and let's move, they heard Gareth say as they descended the wooden stairs, which slowly transitioned into cold, hard stone. When they reached the bottom, there was only an ominous hallway in front of them that was dimly lit with some torches. The only sound they could hear was Gareth's armor clanking and some drops of water falling from the ceiling. At the side, multiple pathways can be seen, totaling six ways to go forward. 7 If you include the door at the end of the hallway, watch the corners, they could be hiding from anywhere, Nira whispered, to which Gareth gave her a nod even though he was not faving her direction. Their hearts tensed as they neared the first and second hallways, which were facing each other. When Hildia used her staff to light the two hallways up, there were nothing but doors at the ends of said hallways. Their muscles still clenched though they moved to the third and fourth hallways. Their muscles twitched as they heard a scream, indicating someone was about to charge them. Before that person would reach them, however, Nera shot him dead with a gunshot. Her shotgun momentarily brightened up the hallway as the small pellets of lead pierced the figure's robes easily, and a wall of lead slammed into his body with enough force to knock him back a few meters. Nira noticed another one that was behind him and immediately shot off another shell. The figure slumped up against the wall due to the blast of her shotgun, which left him bleeding against said wall with multiple holes inside its body. Clear, Nira whispered as she reloaded her firearm, unbeknownst to them. The rest of her team members were shocked beyond belief. Just like that, they're dead. Gareth thought as a drop of sweat ran down his forehead. One shot. Good thing I didn't hit on her when we first met her. Eric thought as he cringed over the thought of asking Nira out when they first met. What kind of weapon? There are multiple holes in their body in an instant. That would have been painful, Shale thought as she slowly undrew her bow. T that was scary, Hildia thought as she held her chest, which was beating fast due to the sudden bang Nira's weapon produced. Gareth, who was the first to recover from his shock, said, Enough of that. Let's move before more show up. They probably heard those bangs. Agreed. Ellie said as she positioned herself to cover Nira's flank. They refocused their attention on the door in front of them. Not before checking the fifth and sixth hallways, where they found no other enemies. Three. 